everyone, welcome to a new video, welcome to my channel, my name is Micah and today I, I am bringing to you my Cool Toned Eyeshadow Palette Collection in two parts. You're looking at mainly the neutral palettes right now and then in the second half of this video we'll look at more colorful things as well because that exists as well. And the reason why I wanted to do this video is A, I promised I would do this because I made a video last month where I talked about my best neutral palettes and you know about me that I love a good cool tone neutral because I have a neutral undertone to my skin so cool tones look pretty good on me on some skin tones they can look a little bit ashy and I think for 75% of the population warm tones would suit them best but especially if you have a cool undertone in your skin or if you're very fair then cool tones can actually look a lot better on you than a lot of the warm tones that are very popular out there so that's another reason why I wanted to do this is to sort of hopefully inspire you who sees this video but also hopefully brands and people in the industry to work more on cool tones I myself love taupes and teals those are my favorite things and uh, yeah that's just something that I hope we see more of in the future so I sort of wanted to do this video as a bit of fun because you know I love a good eyeshadow palette and we are solely focusing on palettes that I feel are just cool tones. So I've left out all the palettes that are either warm or also the ones, for instance, like this one, the Tarte Lid in Bloom, which is one of my favorites. This is a palette that's a good example, I think, of one where you get a mix of things. So this top row, I would say, is more cool toned, the middle one more neutral, and then the bottom row is a bit more warm toned. I'm leaving out palettes that have that mix of things because I think that I, I just wanted to focus on cool stuff. Um, and what you're looking at right now is mainly cool tones, apart from this one, because I just thought it would look pretty for the thumbnail. So I'm going to take that one out and just move this over a little bit, put this guy over here. And so this is what we're going to start off with talking about. There's a mix here of both drugstore and high-end stuff, and I will also be doing some swatches for you, so I hope you enjoy. Let's get started. I'm just going to start with an OG favorite that I think a lot of people know and love. I think one of the cool toned palettes that was pretty much hyped up when it first came out was the Lorac Pro 2, and till this day, this is one of my favorite palettes in my collection. It probably doesn't look very used because one thing that I run into with this palette is that it goes quite dark so and because the the powdery formula that Lorac is known for with those kind of shadows I feel you only need a little bit of product to really make it work. Uh, let's just swatch some favorite shades in here. Uh, so I really like Nectar and um, this shade right here is a really nice transition shade. It's a bit more of like a apricot like peachy kind of shade but I do really like that shade for like a very basic transition I also really like uh, Jade in here which is one of those darker like green shades I love this on the lower lash line um, and it makes for like a really interesting smoky eye as well I feel and those would be my favorite shades here and I just love Lorac's formula as well but this is not my favorite Lorac eyeshadow palette as you may know I prefer the Lorac Pro 3 because I feel it's more neutral toned and a lot lighter than this is like with this my main gripe is that it's just a hair too dark let's just move up the ladder here and talk about something that is a more recent favorite of mine this is the Anastasia Sultry palette and again in terms of cool tones it's not perfect I feel I think that compared to what a lot of people may have in their collections this palette especially released by ABH of course was a more cool toned option compared to everything else that they're doing um, but these two shades here at the top are both very warm and while bloom can still be a nice accent color to go with this I really wish that birch was a cool tone like same like depth and dimension to it but then a cool tone because I feel that twig is a bit lighter than that and dystopian is much darker than it so I sort of want a brown that's in between these two and if that could could have been that shade I would have loved this a whole lot more so it's not perfect in terms of cool tones again um, but shades in here that I really like are the shimmers mainly I really like cyborg here um, this is like what I would call a dirty gray it's 
or a dirty silver, I should say. Let me grab my Lorac palette to bl block the mirror here. Um, so Cyborg is like a silver, but it has something to it that doesn't make it like a straight up silver. I feel that each one of these browns has a very different undertone to it. So that's what I like about it. Is this as cool toned as it could have been? No, <laughs> um, but I feel that way about a lot of cool tone neutral palettes that, you know, like the Little Rock, it, that was a bit too dark. I feel that this still has quite a bit of warmth to it. Let's just uh, move on to a palette that I feel has that same issue. This is the Milani Soft and Sultry. This is a stunning palette. This is great quality. It's a bit expensive over here uh, compared to what you pay for this in the US. It goes for twice as much money, so that's a bit of a gripe for me. And it's not as cool toned as a lot of people make you believe. Is it cooler than most of the things on the market? For sure. But for me, only this middle row is what you really get some cool tones in. And that is then also my favorite row. So it's not a perfect palette by any means, but in terms of cool tones, it offers you this really stunning, like, deep taupe shade. This all over the lid, like, it almost has, like, a plummy undertone. I'm not sure if you can see that. But this is so, so stunning, and I also really like that shimmer that's next to it. The mattes in here are also really pretty, and they just make for a really nice basic look to set things up. So let's talk about this. This is one of my, the palettes that is definitely on the chopping block. I kind of did this video now, before I do my annual declutter, because this is a palette that I bought. It's by iHeart Revolution, or still iHeart Makeup at the time, so Makeup Revolution. And this is their Naked Underneath palette. Whoops. And this palette, in its concept, is incredibly cool. Um, the, the reason why I think it's cool is not only because it's cool toned, but because this was inspired by animal fur, and all of the proceeds of the sales of this palette, I believe, or at least parts of the proceeds, went to animal shelters. So I think that that's really great. This was a limited edition palette, and especially some of these tones on this side I love. Um, and it's definitely more of a cool tone, but I have just fallen out of love with Makeup Revolution stuff. And that's why this is definitely something I just, I never reach for this, I don't wear it. I have shades like this in other palettes that I like better. So that's why this is definitely something that I'm going to no longer be using much. Down here at the bottom, we have the Too Faced White Chocolate Palette. And the White Chocolate Palette is actually one that a lot of people didn't like. And I can tell you why a lot of people didn't like this. Um, at least why I think they didn't like it. It's because it's A, very light, so not great if you have anything deeper than a fair skin tone. Um, and it's also quite cool toned. It has a couple of peaches, but for some reason these peaches pull more pink than orange. So I would say they uh, go very nicely with the rest of the colors. And one of the best, like, just standout shades here is Sugared Raisin. And this is one of those, like, very light, silvery, plummy sort of shimmers. You need a glitter glue to make this stick, which is another thing that people don't like about this palette. But this is stunning, and also indulge. Like, it's like a champagne, but with a cool, cooler undertone to it, which is what I prefer. More Too Faced then, let's just get through these straight away. This is the Chocolate Bonbons, which I believe has been discontinued, so um, I think you can still get it on their website. That's where I still saw it a little bit. Um, but this is, I think, one of the best neutral palettes that was ever there. So I, I'm so gutted that this is being discontinued, if it is discontinued, because this is just one of the best ones. And the reason why I like this the best is that for a cool tone palette, it gives you a lot of options. Very often I find cool tone palettes to exactly be a little bit boring, because everybody thinks all it can be is grays. And this is taking like a couple of like browns in here, uh, this like purpley shade, you get that really bright pop of pink, which is a nice cool tone as well. My favorite shade in the palette has to be Cafe Olay, that has a nice little dent in there. This is actually quite similar, I think, to that indulge sh shade that I just showed you. Next up, we have a ColourPop palette here, and this is not one of my favorites. This is the Fame palette by ColourPop. This is also on the chopping blocks for me, and the reason for that is that this exactly suffers from boring. <laughs> Um, and the reason why this is boring is that it has 16 pans, 
but not all of these pants are very distinct. These two shades pull similarly on the eye. These three mattes, these, th these two shimmers, like, this seems to have a green undertone in the pan, but then it doesn't show up in the eyes. I just felt that this palette was incredibly lackluster, and I know that some people want that from a, a, like a cool tone palette, but I hope that with this video I can show you that there are plenty of cool tone palettes that can be done without it being super boring. Just remembered I forgot to pull in my Urban Decay Naked 2. I'm stupid here. Um, so yeah, so, so while some of these shades are very, very pretty indeed, and the quality of this is super fine because I do really like ColourPop formula, but I just feel that the way these shades are put together is just not really my thing. Uh, so let's just talk about the palette I just pulled in because I had forgotten about putting this in for some reason. But I think if there's an OG uh, eyeshadow palette that's cool toned, it's the Urban Decay Naked 2. Um, and this is still, till this day, one of my favorite palettes. This palette is not perfect. Again, um, I d never use these two like yellow tone shades on this side and I never use the black. So for me, it starts at Booty Call and it goes on to Busted. But yeah, I, I really like Suspect. This is such a great taupey shade. Um, and this is just goals. Like, I know that if I wear that shade, I will just have a great eye look. And the other shade I love a lot in here is YDK. And this is like a taupe but with a rose gold undertone to it. And then we have the Zoeva on taupe. This Zoeva palette is really pretty, but it also suffers from, like the ColourPop palette, being, bit, being a bit samey samey. And with this, I mind it less, precisely for the reason that this is only 10 pans. So there are no duplicates in here, but this can, like, you can only get like one or two real looks out of this palette. But what makes this palette for me is the fact that it has duochromes. And this was released at a time that duochromes were not a thing. So especially Spun Pearl here, this shade looks like nothing in the pan. But then when you swatch it, I'm not sure if you can see that, but it has this blue flash to it. And it's just really, really pretty. Then a palette that I haven't used yet because I have some palettes in here that are quite new to me so that I'm still hoping to test out. And that is this one, the Love in London palette by BH. And the minute I spotted this at Ulta when I was in the US, I was like, yup, I need to try that because this looks stunning. Like the Milani and the Anastasia, I think this is not as cool toned as it can be. Um, especially here, you get some warm tones in there, but especially this shade here called T. I love these grays with like a blue undertone to it. Like, that's just one of my favorite things. And then over here we have an Essence palette. This is the Hello New York eyeshadow palette. This was discontinued as quickly as it was released, but this has some stunning shades. It has grays again. Again, everybody, every brand on the planet seems to think that cool tones means grays. We'll see in a minute that that's not, that doesn't have to be the case. Um, but this again has some stunning duochromes. Uh, this one right here. So I feel that with Cool Tone, she can very easily do something a bit more like special and different than what you can do with warm tones. Also new to my collection is the Dose of Colors Pretty Cool palette. This is another one that I spotted on my travels and I was like, ooh, at some point I need to get it. And I managed to pick it up on Beauty Bay when they had a sale over the winter time. And this is Five Shades of Taupe. <laughs> <laughs> I have only swatched it so far. I think this has to be one of my favorites. It's like a green. Like, it's a taupe with a green undertone, and I've never seen a shade like that. I do have to say that I would have liked it to go a little bit lighter than it does, but I feel the same way about the Berries palette. And that old palette is this little guy here. This is the Urban Decay Naked Basics 2. I have always preferred this one over the Naked Basics because this is just more my vibes. This was designed to go with the Naked 2 palette and especially here, Frisk. This is such a nice, like, cool tone neutral. These, these eyeshadows still work fine and I use these usually to like make a very basic look and then put a glitter on the eye or something. So these are really good basics, but this has been discontinued by now. Let's, let's go into some more drugstore here. This is another Essence palette. This has really fun packaging because it has glitter that moves around. This is the Essence Silver Glitter Show palette. And this palette 
is some of the best eyeshadow quality that Essence has ever done, and it was limited edition. And again, like a lot of the palettes I've been showing you, it's not as cool toned as you might like, especially because it has this gold in the bottom, but this shade here, that is such a stunning taupe shade. Uh, I told you I love taupes, don't come for me please, but that, I don't know about you, but that's Essence. Like, since when is Essence doing this great eyeshadow? Moving on to something very new, I just got this in the other day, and this is the Grimoire palette by V Cosmetics. And this is a palette that I bought because I knew I was going to do this video. I spotted this as one of their new releases over the winter time, and I was intrigued by it. And then I was like, you know, I've never tried this brand. They are UK based, they are vegan, they are indie, and I was like, okay, I want to try this. I do have to say that with this, I feel that the pictures online just make it look better than it actually is. I think that the quality is fine. I mean, I'll swatch this black right here in the middle. Are you ready for this? Oh, that's, that's a stunning black. I'm not a fan of black eyeshadow. Look at that pigmentation and how it drags. What? Like, that's insane. But one thing I, I didn't know when I bought it is that it has two pressed glitters. And I'm not a fan of pressed glitter. Um, but what I find so interesting about this palette is that it still looks very neutral. But it has these, like, greens and grays, like, towards the bottom. So I do really like that concept. So I can't wait to play around with this. And so we only have a couple of neutral palettes left. This is my Melt Gunmetal stack. So this has four shades. It's got one matte and three shimmers and I really I bought this on sale from Beauty Bay over the Black Friday sales because I think this is a shade gunmetal no this is industrial this is gunmetal and those two shades I think look really stunning I think this can be a very nice curated like smoky eye but that's the only thing you can do with it but I think these two shimmers can work really well with like other things that you may have already in your collection and this is something that didn't come shattered because Melt shadows are super fragile, so if you get these, it's best to perhaps, if you're in the US, get them from a physical Sephora, because, and then just keep them safe in your bag. Let's go in with something affordable here. This is the Catrice, the Modern Matte Palette, and this is surprisingly cool toned. This is one that they've never discontinued from their collection for some reason as well, which I've always found a bit funny, because Catrice has a habit of discontinuing everything. Are these the best shadows on the palette planet? No, they're not, but they are cute, they're very affordable, and if you take the time to build these up, they are really nice. The same actually goes for the Superbia Volume 2, Volume 2 by Catrice. This is actually quite similar to the Hello New York palette by, uh, by Essence, but this is just... This has less quality, I would say. It has a really nice purple here that also does show up purple, so, I mean, no issues there, but I just feel that, like with a lot of Essence and Catrice stuff, this just kind of blends away. And then we have three palettes left, and in the middle right now we have the Venus Immortalis by Lime Crime. A lot of people are having issues with these, that they develop heart pan. Mine still seems fine. Um, some people have had this, like, even after just one or two uses. I really like Moth in here. This is a really nice like transition crease shade, it's pretty light, but these two shimmers, Echo and Heal, Echo is a really, really pretty taupe, and then Heal is like a really pretty silver. I also like Unveil. And then we've got two left. We have a Max Factor palette here. This is called Cappuccino Nudes. This may have a different name if it's a CoverGirl palette in the US. And I bought this precisely because it was neutral, because at the time I felt I didn't have that many like drugstore neutral palettes and this has really great quality. I just wish that these pans were a bit different. Like these are silky smooth, these are really nice and I really like the look that I did with it. It's like a very classic neutral palette. And then last but not least, the Smoke Show palette by Colourpop. This is one that I haven't used yet um, because I still have to dig into all of my Colourpop monochromatic palettes. But this palette, ooh, I'm going to be blinding you. This palette is of course known for it being grays and blacks. That's essentially what it is. And I'm just really happy that ColourPop did this. I think it's really clever. 
Um, again, I've only swatched this so far. It looks pretty. I don't think the black in here is as black as the one in the V Cosmetics one, for instance. Um, but yeah, this has some stunning shades. I quite like the look of this one and also this one here. Those seem to be a bit more unique. <clears throat> and I do think that, like... Even if you don't want to go for a smoky eye, these shimmers can still work quite well. So I told you that we were also going to be looking at some colorful stuff, because colors do not have to be just warm tones as well. I think that pinks, purples, greens, and blues are very often in the cool tone spectrum. I think for purples and greens especially, uh, pinks as well, depending on how the, the color is mixed, it can be warmer or cooler. It depends on how the color is sort of blend it together. Let's just start with this in the middle. Um, I already showed you this at the beginning. This is the Venus XL by Lime Crime, and I spotted this when I was in New York, and this doesn't, when you look at it, look very cool toned. It wasn't until I swatched it that I was like, oh, but I know why people didn't like this. It's A, quite fair, and two, a part, I think, from this Phoenix shade and Forbidden, Everything in here has a cooler undertone to it. So this is quite a cool tone palette. And then the other one here in the middle is the Juvia's Place, the Magic palette. And this is the only palette that also has warm tones that I wanted to make an exception for in this video. And the reason for that is because I only reach for this palette because of the cool tones. So in case you didn't know what this looks like, it's got two rows of cool tones at the bottom and two warm tones at the top, two rows of warm tones at the top. And it's this this section is just heaven to me. Um, it's got this like teal shade, which I love. This purple that is just, oh, it's got like a blue flash. This purple matte is very dry and needs a lot of building up like this matte navy. But all of these shades work so well. I like this gray shade, these two greens. Like, I like all, sh all eight of these. So I have both two of these Makeup Revolution palettes. The other one is here. And this was their Star Sign collection. And they also did a Fire and Earth version. This is the water one. And I believe, yeah, this is the one that goes with my own Star Sign. This is an old shimmer palette. And it's got a lot of greens. It has, again, like one or two warm tones, but then it has like these pinks to go with it. And I think that's really nice. And especially like some of these greens in here. These are stunning. Like I told you before that I had fallen out of love with Makeup Revolution, but I think these two palettes that I have here are really stunning. Again, something that's very new to me is the ColourPop Mint To Be palette. ColourPop was doing a 25% off sale. Um, a few weeks ago, so I got this in that order, and this is so stunning, and I was like, oh yeah, greens can also be cool tones. There's a reason why the Just My Luck isn't in here, because those are warm tone greens, but for instance this, and also this, like, this is very similar to that sage shade in the Lime Crime palette I just showed you, like, these are stunning, stunning shades. And then we've got some pinks here. I've got this little Dior quad, which was limited edition years ago. It was one of the first eyeshadow palettes I think I ever bought. It's called Graphic Lights, and it has a lot of cool tone pinks. And I especially like this shade here. This is like a salmon shade, but then it has like this like brighter sort of pinky flash to it. But I do like a bit of pink from time to time, so I bought myself the Ooh La La by ColourPop in their Black Friday sale. And again, this is something I still have to put on my face. And this again looks super stunning. And in terms of pinks, I think this can again be a bit warm depending on how you put it all together, but especially like this shade here. Oh. And Sandbar. I love Sandbar. I have that as a single. If you're looking for a bright matte fuchsia, oh. like, and I think that this is one of the better ColourPop monochromatic palettes. And then we've got purples here. We've got another Dior one. This is the Midnight, no, Night Butterfly palette. And this is cool tone purple. So again, purples can also be cool toned or warm toned depending on how you use them. I especially like this and this lilac -y shade. Like these are really nice. And again, like the pink palette that I have by Dior, these are old, you guys, but these still swatch 
perfectly well. And then I've got two more ColourPop ones. Of course, they first came out, I think, with It's My Pleasure. And a lot of people have been saying about this palette that it's not very purple because it pulls more pinky purple. And personally, I really like that because it means it's more cool toned. So you can see, especially here, like you've got some pinky shades. Mr. Sandman is a one, uh, is a shade I have as a single and that I personally, again, love so much. This is so pretty. Oh, my hand is still a bit wet. So this swatch is perhaps a little bit more intense than it should be. And I also like Chiclet. And like the Ooh La La, this I think swatched the best out of most of the ColourPop monochromatic palettes that I own. I have the ColourPop Lilac You A Lot palette here too. And this I have to put in because lilacs are cool tones by definition. But in here, I just really like this color story. This is totally up my sleeve, but you do get a little bit of depth to really create a good look. And I just need to swatch this one because this is also popping out. This is called Fluff. See, this pan is just moving around. That's not good, but this is like a really nice, more cool toned purple. So I already mentioned that I had that Makeup Revolution palette also in the Air Sign palette, and this has some blues. I feel that the green one has more greens. This doesn't have as many blues, I feel, but you do get this really interesting shade here. Um, it's like, like not a gray, but it's not as like, it's like a sky blue, but without it being super duper bright. It's like a muted sky blue. Then the Dior Twilight palette. This has a stunning deep navy and we need to discuss navies because navy and teal are some of my favorite shades to wear. I've got brown eyes you guys so uh, in case you've never seen me on camera before. Uh, I have brown eyes and navies and teals just work best on me in terms of like deep shades. Um, because they just go really well with brown eyes. So here we do have one of those Huda Beauty palettes, uh, one of those Obsessions palettes. This is the Sapphire Obsessions. And blues, you guys, are 9 out of 10 times going to be cool tone because blues, again, by definition, are cool tones. I do feel that because this has those, like, turquoises, that kind of takes away from it, but you do also get this like taupey shimmer, which I like. The only shade that doesn't really work very well in here, um, not in terms of color story, but also in terms of quality, is this like lime green, yellowy kind of shade. This just doesn't look really nice at all. Um, I think that of the Huda Beauty palettes that I own, this has to be my least favorite because it, it doesn't perform as well as the other ones. Then we have the ColourPop Blue Moon palette, and of the ColourPop Monochromatic palettes, that I've tried, of course I haven't tried them on my face yet, but I felt that this one didn't have great pigmentation. Uh, I, I think it was this matte. I think some of the, and also this double D shade, like this just kind of doesn't do much of anything. And I'm not sure whether it's just mine, like you need to build these up, like these just, ooh. Whereas those really light shades in the Mint to Be palette, no issues with it, but this, just kind of goes into nowhere. So I'm very curious what this will do once it's on my face. Well, I, I seem to be really into blue palettes because that's what I have the most off here because I also have the Blue Blood by Jeffree Star. And this has, ooh, let me not blind you in the mirror here. So this palette has some peaches and some neutrals, but I feel that out of all of his palettes, the, this has the least neutrals which I'm very happy with. And I feel that peaches and blues go together really, really well. One of my favorite shades in this palette is Ice Tray, which is again, that like grayish, muted sky blue kind of shade. Ocean Ice, like this glitter. And that just blends into your skin. Like that's so intense, like nice, deep royal blue. These are my palettes that I feel have more than like one sort of color going on in them. Uh, let's just start with this because I think that this is a great example of how cool tones can be colorful. And this is the super, the Sample Beauty Hydrographic Eyeshadow Palette. And this palette, greens, blues, and purples. And it sort of has this like indigo, like bluey purple, like blurples and like to transition. So I just really like this because this is all colorful. You could pull it in with some of your neutral palettes and this is quite affordable. I think this is like around the 20 euro mark. So I was uh, blocking the mirror here with the Sleek Enchanted Forest palette. 
I think this is a great example of a cool tone palette with more muted colors in them. It's got a teal over here, like more of like a grayish teal. Uh, I like this purpley shade. It like it plays really well together and it keeps middle ground between a neutral and a colorful palette. Like if you're someone who likes cool tones, wants to play around with color, but you're afraid of two like bright pops of color like the Sample Beauty palette, this is perfect and I believe you can still get it. And then at the bottom right here we have the Morphe and Jaclyn Hill Dark Magic palette from her Revolt. My palettes are fine, I never had any issues with these. There are only one or two shades in mine that I feel don't perform well, but this has to be my favorite palette in that entire selection. It's got this teal here called Busted and then this Diversion uh, Taupey shade. Those are my two favorites. I love these. This is the Zoeva IC palette and this is a palette that, again, nobody raves about because more people should talk about this brand. This seems perhaps not that cool toned at first glance because you see that red, but let me swatch that for you actually. It looks like a cranberry shade, huh? But then you put it on and it has such a strong pink flash to it that it's actually like, and also when you blend it out, it becomes more of like a pink, pink tone. So that works really well with the rest of these shades. And then we've got two left, and these are quite similar because these are blue-green palettes. So this is by Certify. This is the Affinity 2 palette. And this is the Ace, o Ace Beauté Oceanic palette. And I bought both of these because I thought they were very similar at first, but now that I've tried both, I feel that they are still very cool-toned, but each one gives you something differently. This is one of my favorite shades in here. I think it's called... Off top. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Again, it's one of those muted sky blue shades that I seem to like. Um, it's not as bright as Bora Bora in this one. In this one, I really like Anemone. Anemone? I, 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 feel, I always have to think of Finding Nemo. It's like a green with like, like an olive green kind of shade, so that's perhaps a bit more warm toned. But this has teal, so it has Marina and Pacific, which this doesn't have. Like, I feel that this is more like primary, like blues, and this doesn't have that much of that sort of vibe. So I also feel like the Ace Beauté stuff is uh, a little bit more saturated, perhaps. Not better, like, I wouldn't say better pigmentation, because I feel that this works really well, too. It's just that the undertones in both of these are very different. So there you have it. Those are all of my cool tone palettes. I'm pretty sure that maybe I have more. Maybe you feel that some of these weren't cool tones. Who cares? This is my take on cool tones. And I just thought it could be fun to share. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. And yeah, if you could join my little family here, that would be lovely. If not, I make three new videos every single week, so I hope to see you in my next one. Bye!